So if correlation isn't causation, then how do we determine causation, right? What can we do? And a lot of the scientific method, of course, involves coming in and doing manipulative experiments. So suppose we want to figure out whether a, uh, you know, whether we know that thing A and thing B are, are correlated, and we want to figure out, well, you know, is there, a, is there a causal arrow here? Is there a common cause? What's going on? We can go in and we can perturb things. So we go in and, uh, and we, try, uh, we try changing thing A and, uh, and see what happens. Well, if there's common cause, then that should have no effect on thing B, right? Because there's no causal arrow from thing A to thing B. Um, similarly, if, if, there's, if there's common cause, then we go in and we change thing B. That should have no effect on thing A, right? So that's a way that we can actually get in there and use experimentation to try to get at causality. You know, the reverse, if we actually have direct causality, then we see something different. We change thing A, and we perturb change thing A, we see a change in thing B. If the causality goes in the other direction, we perturb B, we see a change in A, right? And so that's helping us get at these underlying causal questions. If I had a little bit more time, I'd take you through an example of fever and, and, and whether fever actually has beneficial health outcomes and so forth. But I think what I want to do instead is, is uh, close by just summarizing uh, some of the sort of causal relationships I want you to start looking at every time you're presented with a correlation in a scientific paper. So when you see a correlation, you know, first question, is it, is it causal or is it just coincidence? I mean, we talked about all of these funny correlations that Jevin had uh, with the time series. These were just coincidence. Uh, but we got to ask that for science too. You know, somebody's, somebody's compared uh, 50 different, uh, um, you know, m measures of, uh, of performance on, on some test with 50 other different uh, uh, outcome variables and these found two that are correlated, you know, that looks like it may well be coincidence. So we've got to look out for that. Uh, you see a claim about causality or an implicit claim about causality because of the structure of a graph. Which way does the causality actually go? Do they, have they really put the independent variable on the x and the dependent variable on the y? Or is it reversed? Don't be fooled by that. Always consider that the causality could be reversed, or we could have uh, kind of a looping cycle. Um, is causality uh, direct, or is it mediated by a common cause? So just because two things are correlated, as we saw with a number of the examples, um, the storks and the, and the birth rates, for example, um, they may not have any direct causal relationships, but uh, there's this outside common cause that's determining both. And related to that, don't get fooled by this post hoc propter ergo hoc. Um, with the storks and the births, there wasn't sort of a time order, but with, uh, with you know, something like a, like a vaccination story, there's a time order, or, or with our Babies R Us story, there's a time order. And so don't let that time order trick you into thinking that there's got to be a causal arrow running that way. It's true that there's not one running this way, but there's not necessarily running that one, one running that way either. Um, when you hear claims about cause, oh, A is causing B. Well, do you have the most important cause? Or is there some other cause that we're not talking about that's even more important? And uh, finally, and you know, this is really what we do in a lot of the experimental method in science, is you know, if, you're, if you're told that there's a, there's a causal relationship somewhere, but all you're given is correlation, then you ask, well, OK, you're just showing me correlation. Is there a way that experimental perturbations could be used to tease out the direction of causality? And I think if you can learn, whenever you're seeing correlational data being given as, uh, you know, as evidence for various things, if you can learn to sort of run through these in your mind, I think you'll be able to do a much better job of seeing through accidental mistakes or deliberate uh, sophistry in, in presenting uh, claims about causation. <laughs>